finally we spin out with the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge. We pick up the action on stage three in the vast Rub al Khali Desert. Starting sixth on the road for the 289 kilometer stage through the towering dunes, Sam Sunderland passed passage controls behind his rivals on the track, but well ahead on stage times. By the end of the day, he held a three minute lead over Chilean rider Pablo Quintanella, the reigning world champion. Frenchman Pierre Alexander René knew it would be difficult to open the stage. The Husqvarna rider was fifth, behind the leading duo, KTM's Matthias Walkner and Honda's Paolo Goncalves. Walkner had a one minute time penalty for speeding in a controlled zone. That meant he lost the overall lead to Goncalves at the start of the day. Qatar's Nasser Salah al Atiyah stormed to another stage victory, increasing his lead. Al Atiyah and French co driver Mathieu Beaumel led through the cooler and windier conditions in their overdrive racing Toyota Hilux. The Qatari now led the Peugeot 3008 DKR of Khalid Al Qasimi by 40 minutes. Al Qasimi lost time when he became bogged in the dunes. He had to deflate the tyres before he could get going again. After that, he took a wrong turn and needed time to get going in the right direction. Khalid Al Jafla produced a solid drive to be third quickest in his V8 Chevrolet. Russian mini driver Vladimir Vasiliev had to withdraw at the end of the stage with a back injury. The 250 km stage 4 was the last of the loops through the Rub al Khali desert. It started between Mazira and Magnet Zayed before heading southwest and then turning east to Al Birer. The scene was set for a dramatic showdown on the bikes. And victory on stage four went to Honda rider Kevin Benavides. However, the Argentinian had already lost his chance for the overall win due to clutch problems on stage three. Where you finish the stage decided the start order for the final day. So it was a tactical battle between the front runners. Paolo Goncalves led Matthias Walkner. Pierre Alexander René, Sam Sunderland and Pablo Quintanella. It would be a tough final day for the Portuguese. On the first overall right now and I start behind uh, all the other top uh, four or five guys, for sure I'm happy and I'm in really, really good uh, condition to achieve the final victory. But uh, right now with this uh, strategy system on this uh, race, I'm in not a good uh, starting position because I'm first overall, but uh, all the other three guys start behind me and uh, if it happened like uh, the, other, the other days before, uh, normally they arrive with me and if this happened, I start to be behind them again. So let's try to push as fast as possible to, to try arrive in front. <laughs> Nasser Salah al extended his lead on four wheels to a commanding one hour and 46 minutes over Khalid al Qasimi, despite the tricky conditions. Co-driver Mathieu Beaumel explained. Yes, the win is a little bit problem for me yesterday because uh, as soon as one car or one bike pass, the, the, the wind brings the sand into the track and you cannot see anything. So it's like you are alone in the desert and sometimes it's a little bit scary. Khalid Al Jafla was holding fourth place. Part of the stage was along the Saudi frontier and the dunescape south of Morib before finishing west of Hamim. A broken drive shaft cost Khalid Al Qasimi over an hour, but he held on to second place. Czech driver Martin Prokop was on course for a career-best finish. 
The former WRC driver set the fourth quickest time and held third overall in his Ford F-150. He confirmed just how tough it had been. They said yesterday on the briefing it would be nicest, nicest stage. So now I understand what is the nicest for them. <laughs> it was really, really difficult, a lot of dunes and big drops and uh, big, big uphill, downhill. We get stuck like four times, we had to take the car out. But in the end we are here and uh, we lost some minutes, but not, not an hour. So I'm happy to be here. The last day of the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge and Nasser al Atiyah appeared to be cruising to victory. The Qatari was caught out on a quick section and launched the Toyota Hilux into a heavy roll. The crew frantically tried to make repairs, but it opened the door for Khalid al Qasimi to grab a last minute victory. Al Qasimi and navigator Khalid al Kendi had put their previous day's troubles behind them and were pushing hard to the finish. It all depended now on whether Al Atiyah could keep the battered Toyota going to the finish line. Al Qasimi did his bit, setting the quickest time on the stage, which kept the pressure on Al Atiyah. Martin Prokop delivered a career best performance in this discipline of rallying. He finished the stage 41 minutes and 26 seconds behind Al Qasimi. The V8 Ford produced an impressive sight and sound over the dunes. Mohamed Abu Issa enjoyed a successful transition from racing on a quad to being competitive in a car. The Qatari was third in his Mini all for racing. While the front runners were speeding through the 220 kilometre stage, Nasser Al Atiyah and Mathieu Bomel were just keeping their Toyota Hilux going and with it, the chance to win the Desert Challenge. On two wheels, Honda's Paolo Goncalves began the last stage with a 34 second lead. Dakar champion Sam Sunderland produced a stunning ride on his KTM 450 rally to seal the stage win and earn his first Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge victory. Sunderland delivered a masterclass through the crucial opening kilometres. Even though Pablo Quintanella overtook Mohamed Jafar early on, Sunderland passed both Jafar and Mohamed Al Balushi. He was 3 minutes 17 seconds quicker than Quintanella by PC1, 88 kilometres into the stage. Victory was now the Englishman's to lose over the closing kilometres. Pablo Quintanella bounced back from recent career setbacks to claim second place on his Husqvarna. He eventually finished 6 minutes and 14 seconds behind Sunderland. Austrian Matthias Walkner won the battle with Paolo Goncalves for third place. Starting eighth on the road was an obvious advantage for Sunderland and the Dubai-based rider strategy paid off with a deserved win. After his Dakar victory, his aim this year is to win the World Championship. As 
the bikes finished the stage, it was the end of the road for NASA Al Atiyah's Toyota. After trying to continue for a short while, he had to retire the damaged car at PC1. And that meant the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge win was confirmed for Khalid Al Qasimi in his Peugeot 3008 DKR. And onto the podium, Sam Sunderland on his KTM 450. It's cool, you know, it's um, a home race if you like, living in Dubai is the closest one I have to, to me and I'm um, oh, really happy the bike and the team were perfect all week and we had a tough fight, you know, it looks easy on paper, the strategy and things, but really it's uh, not so easy when you're out there, you know, we had really hot temperatures the first days, was around 50 degrees and a lot of people were suffering, and including myself, And uh, but yeah, it went well, you know, um, didn't really make any mistakes and um, today I started behind, which was the plan and had to had to push a lot to catch the time back and it all worked out, so really happy. That's all from this series of Shifting Gears. We look forward to bringing you more from the past, present and future of motoring next time.